You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Got an interesting show. So as some of you may be aware, others may not... Breath of the Wild 2 released very recently, and I've been playing the holy heckers out of that game. Oh my god, I love that game to death. Couple of critiques for it. I've had a couple of critiques for uh, Breath of the Wild 1 also, but, oh uh, god, it's another masterpiece. They accomplished another masterpiece. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to listen to Mike Lindell act like a nutter butter as usual. And we're going to play Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild 2, while we do. Um, now, if you haven't played Breath of the Wild 2, you don't want any spoilers or anything, I'm going to start a new game. It's going to be just fresh start from the very beginning just going to be like in the tutorial section or whatever so there won't be too many like spoilers to be found here and if there is an obvious spoiler that happens i won't put it or i won't point it out i'm just going to ignore it keep my mouth shut pretend it's not there at all so yeah uh shouldn't be too much of a problem for you but God, I'm excited. Like, I really love this game. I've probably got 15 hours into this game already, maybe 20. I don't know. And uh, I neglected my work yesterday, unfortunately. I, also, I'm going to skip the cutscenes because I've already seen them. And if you really want to see the cutscenes, it's all you. It's your thing. Enjoy the cutscenes to your heart's content, but... That's not what we're here to do. We're here to listen to uh, Mike Lindell do his Mike Lindell thing. So there's this TV show called Flashpoint. It's owned and operated by the Victory Network, which is owned by Kenneth Copeland, right? And they do like these live events all over the place. This one is in Nashville, Tennessee, the one that we're about to watch here. And they get really high profile characters to come to these events and talk and blah, 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 whatever. Mike Lindell is one of the people they get on to talk about all of their nutter butter and their wing nuttery. They also get Jesse Duplantis. You may not know Jesse Duplantis, but I'll show you and give you a little context for who that guy is as we go along. Uh, they got like Hank Kuhneman. He's another famous televangelist, a bunch of people. Gene Bailey is the host. So, yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's give this a listen. See what they have to say for themselves. I'm going to try to jump forward and get to a point where they're actually talking about their stuff and not just blathering on about their network or whatever. Okay, let's see here. Cootmaster, doing better? Thank you so much for asking, Cootmaster. I am. I, I feel like I'm doing okay. I'm making it. That's good. Pride Month is coming. I'm excited. Absolutely. It's very true. Pride Month is coming. Oh, by the by, notice in Breath of the Wild, you start out with 20 hearts maxed out and the Master Sword. Um, this part is kind of a spoiler if this is your first time playing the game, but it's like the first five minutes, so it's not really a spoiler. You're just kind of wandering around with Zelda underneath the castle, and then you discover something nefarious. So, anyway. All right. Let's listen to uh, Lindell. And uh, this is uh, Gene Bailey. Listen to Gene Bailey give lead up to some of the guests real quick. Wow. What you see, it's worth to come just for what plays before we come out, isn't it? God is so good. How many of you really believe America shall be saved? Try to turn it down a little bit. I want to blow your eardrums out here. No, I, I can't hear you. But how about over here? Anybody here believe America going to be saved? Yeah. 
God, he's playing to the crowd. He's trying to get their attention. This is just ugh, whatever. Some people. Wow. Man, oh man, oh man. All right. Like to do this every time we do a special event. Uh, listen, this is near and dear to my heart. We made a few stain, a few changes on the platform. We added a few flags. Which flags did they have? They got the American flag. Hold on, let me blow this up for a second here. One second. Uh, okay, they got the American flag. They've got what the is that the Israeli flag? I can't tell which flags these are or why I should care. Okay, go on. Because my boss, Kenneth Copeland, the whole ministry, Eagle Mountain International Church and Flashpoint, we honor our veterans. Mm, they don't honor the veterans. They take advantage of them and they use them for what they can get out of them. They don't give a shit about the veterans, but okay. Yeah, by the by, in Breath of the Wild, this is where it starts to get real. I'm not going to play the sound to it. But they're under the castle. Just give a little context here. They've just defeated Ganon. And they've found an arm, a right arm, gripping a skeleton. A dead skeleton. The right arm falls off and some kind of a teardrop shape falls from the hand, right? You can't skip this part, so that's why I'm describing it. I'm also not playing the audio. It starts glowing weirdly. And then the skeleton, it turns out, is moving. Holy Christ on a cracker, bro. And the skeleton opens its eyes and looks directly at you. Oh, boy. That is scary stuff, dude. And it just shreds your life and your right arm. Just destroys your right arm and the master sword. It just shattered the Master Sword. Wow, that's scary stuff. And so, yeah, the point is that the Master Sword can't even touch whatever the hell this thing is. That's scary, right? Oh, my God. Woo! Scary stuff. Okay, let's keep listening. So, if you are a veteran... Currently, or served in the military, would you please stand? They've got always got to get their uh, plugs for the veterans, don't they? They always have to bring veterans into the equation, get them involved, make them feel special, honor them, even though they don't give a shit about the veterans, okay? Never did. You know what they give a shit about? They give a shit about their voter base. They give a shit about growing their voter base, getting more voters and making this is called virtue signaling, by the way. They want to signal to everybody around them that they care about this thing, even though they very obviously do not. If they cared about veterans to any degree at all, they would make sure that veterans health care was well funded and taken care of. They wouldn't put them into meaningless pointless, ridiculous, obscene wars nonstop. There are a billion things they could do for veterans if they really cared for them that they're not doing. Not one. You know what they are doing, though? Let's give a clap for our veterans. Yeah, let's, let's hear it for our veterans. All right. Yeah. Thank you for the clap. I appreciate that. That was so nice of you to clap for the veterans. And so productive, too. You know, that really regrew the leg that that Marine had blown off because your ass voted for him to go there in the first place. That's really going to regrow his leg. Yeah. Yeah, that applause line is really going to help that piece of shrapnel that got lodged in the guy's arm, the soldier's arm, that will be there forever. 
and hurts when he moves it. That clapping, that's going to fix it. That's going to solve the problem. Thank you so much, Flashpoint, for honoring our veterans. Good job. Fantastic job. You're, you're stand-up people signaling your virtue for these guys. Give them a hand. You know, look, these poor fools are falling for it. Okay, there are people standing in this audience. Yeah, these are veterans. These are people that purportedly or, or supposedly or we are to be or we're to believe went overseas to Afghanistan and watched a kid tie a bomb around himself and blow himself up in front of him. These are the types of people that are sitting in this audience. And all they needed was a little validation. And where are they getting that validation? From scumbags that are going to take advantage of them at every turn. That's where. Embarrassing and disgusting. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, listen, so many, so many things happening in our nation. I mean, we could, we could be here for like three weeks uh, and just get through today's news. Uh, <clears throat> you know why they want to have the veterans on their side? Because if it ever did come to what the right is trying to push it to, a civil war, if it ever did come to a civil war, the right would need people who knew how to handle a weapon competently, who had been in war competently, who had been there and done that. Something these, something these people probably don't realize, though, about people who have seen real combat, is if you've seen real combat, you will do literally anything to avoid it in the future. Literally anything. Seeing if w when you get the opportunity to really be in a war, really see fighting, really see combat, you will do anything to avoid seeing that again. You know, uh, there are children that watch my YouTube channel on a regular basis. And for that reason, I try really, really hard not to swear. But sometimes I feel like saying swears for the sake of making a point is important. War fucks somebody up. It really messes your head up to see some of the shit that these people have seen in this audience. To see some of the things that these people are clapping for, that these people are endorsing, that they want. To see some of the things that these people keep talking about. New 1776 moment, right? New 1776 moment, baby. The people in the crowd being honored for their service are being, uh, I'm sorry, are being honored for a very specific reason. Because they are expected to stand up when the time comes. When it's time to have their, their very own 1776 moment. Trust me. Those people know what it's like to be in a war and don't want another. I want to recognize tonight someone special to Flashpoint. I met this man back in Pensacola. He is the Chief Justice of the state of Alabama. Would you please welcome Chief Justice Tom Walker and his wife.
Chief Justice of the State of Alabama. What does that mean? Of the State of Alabama, would you please welcome Chief Justice Tom Walker and his wife, Dottie. Would you guys please stand? Where are they? I don't know that Chief Justice Tom Walker and Dottie. Oh, let me look this up real quick. Hang on. Tom Walker and Dottie. Uh, I'm not sure who these people are. Maybe they'll introduce them in a minute. Okay, go on. There they are. Thank you, sir. Tom Parker. I keep wanting to say Walker, but it's Parker. Chief Tom Parker. All right, thank you. All right. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can see around Nashville, and it's amazing how you run into people all the time and you just never know who's going to be here so i ask a few friends to come on out so would you please welcome a few of my friends hank kuhneman lance wall now mike lindell rick green and jesse duplantis come on out gentlemen okay so the people he just listed are all very much evangelical nutter butters i'm sure you caught a couple of those names jesse duplantis you may know uh, Mike Lindell, I'm sure you probably know. That's why you're on this video, more than likely. Um, Hank Kuhneman is a... Tele I mean, these are all close friends of uh, Kenneth Copeland. He's a televangelist. Um, Lance Walna is also a televangelist. Had his bank account frozen and seized recently for money laundering. He's a shill of Russia. Dead serious. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Who else did they mention? Jesse Duplantis. Uh, you'll, you'll get to know him in just a minute if you don't know him already. You guys remember that famous talk that, uh, Copeland had about having a private jet and how important it is and how you get in a long tube full of demons otherwise. If you're on a commercial jet or whatever, you get in a long tube full of demons. Yeah, that was... Jesse Duplantis that he was talking to. So um, Duplantis is absolutely obsessed with money, obsessed with it. It's disgusting. And we'll get there. We'll get there. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Perturbed Sun. Love the name. Love the profile picture once again. Thank you for the super chat. TOTK is so good. BOTW is my favorite game of all time. And thus far, I think TOTK may be usurping that coveted spot glad you're enjoying it too owen oh absolutely dude oh my god t-o-t-k is oh check it out it's a dragon you see it i haven't been able to reach it yet i don't know what it is or or what it's for or what but yeah it's a dragon just kind of floats in the sky it's really really cool anyway t-o-t-k is Oh my god, it's suddenly slipping my what <laughs> what is this game called? I forget. Uh Tears of the Kingdom, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh B O T W is Breath of the Wild. Fantastic games, both of them. Uh I'm kind of a fan of Tears of the Kingdom because they've given a lot of um quality of life improvements to it. To uh Breath of the Wild. That's been nice. But um I don't know. There are a couple of downsides to it. For example, you don't have access to Hardy Durian as easily in this one. as you, In fact, they're just not in this game. Hardy Durian don't exist in this game. And Hardy Durian could be used to cook, like, basically anything back in the day. Like, you could cook so many Hardy Durian that you could have, like, a maxed out set of hearts and it was super useful anyway it has its downsides it's a lot more difficult in my opinion than breath of the wild but oh is it fun if you know what you're doing holy mother is it fun fantastic game so anyways yeah thank you for the uh super chat there what's your favorite zelda game and what are the and what the other game do you think is 
best. Left is best. Thank you so much. I appreciate the uh, the super chat there. Favorite Zelda game. Um, a link to the past, or I'm sorry, uh, a link between worlds is really good. Link to the past I've never played, but I understand is just as good as a link between worlds. I would say, honestly, you're going to laugh at me for this. Tears of the Kingdom is number one. Or Breath of the Wild's number one. Tears of the Kingdom's number two, in my opinion. And then A Link Between Worlds, number three. Maybe. And the others, I just haven't played all of them, so... Anyway, thank you guys so much for the super chats. Appreciate that. All right, let's keep listening here. Where are they? <laughs> All right. Hi, there's Rick. Well, at least Rick showed up. Right, so they're bringing out all of the uh, Nutter Butters that they just invited on stage here. Okay. Rick Green, everybody. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all right, all right. Well, coming. everybody else is coming. Rick Green, you know, you know Rick. They're praying. By the way, Rick Green, this guy here, wow, he's short. Um, He is the founder i believe of an organization called uh god it's on the tip of my tongue patriot academy that's it patriot academy and it basically exists with the sole intent and purpose to brainwash children and erode the separation between church and state Make it harder for government to stay separate from uh, the church, basically. Writes legislation for uh, governors and legislators of various different sorts to submit or to, like, apply or whatever else. It's just bad. It's bad. It's a terrible organization. Oh. Sorry, it's bad. It's just bad. It's a terrible organization, and it sets out to make the world worse. Of course, in my opinion, make the world worse. But still, it's awful in every way. People. So we were back there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're eating is what happened. Um, Hello, Nashville. Hey, how about Rick Green? Rick, I, I want to just... Kind of weird that they called everybody out and, like, nobody came out but Rick Green. That's weird, right? Is it just me? We, well, what we were going to do with everybody, I'm going to do it with just you. Um, there they come. Uh, See, come on, there they are. You know. Hank Kudem and Jesse Duplantis. It's, it's Jesse's shoes. That's what took them. Yeah. yeah. Jesse is wearing, uh, again, Jesse Duplantis is obsessed with money. He's wearing sneakers. Why is this dude wearing sneakers right now? Okay, since we're, you know, watching this unfold in front of us, let me just show you guys. Everybody's got a good quality about him, right? Every single person has something you can appreciate about him. Let me show you the thing I, I appreciate about Donald Trump. The one thing that I think is honorable about the guy. I don't, I'm not sure if I have it saved. Apparently, I don't have it saved. Okay, let me find it on YouTube real quick. Just take me a second here. Here, this is it. First thing, in Next fact. Sec. Okay, I'm going to... Um, it's three minutes long. Okay. So let me give you some context here. I got to download this and clip it up. So there is about to be a debate. It's a primary debate between all of the primary challengers back in 2016, right? Uh, Trump was about to debate Marco Rubio, Chris Christie, uh, Ben Carson, I don't remember who else, John Kasich, bunch of people, right? And they were calling them all out on stage one by one. And just, you know what, watch what happens. Watch what happens. 
Ben Carson and Donald Trump were kind of forming a little bit of a friendship together, a little bit of a relationship, just a little bit, you know? They'd been lambasted by the press together and were kind of working together a little bit. And uh, and then this happens. Just just take a look at this. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Let me turn the volume up a little bit here. Okay. Things go off track. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Okay, so you can see Chris Christie walk out. Ben Carson's supposed to walk out, and he walks out into the main area there. And instead of walking out onto the stage like he was expected to, he just stands there while the camera, like, looks at him. Basically. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to pause. Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Whoa, uh -oh. he starts walking out. Ben Carson does. He thinks it's his time. And the announcers are like, well, I guess this dude's just not coming out. So we're going to call the next guy. And they call Ted Cruz. So Ben Carson starts walking out on stage. He hears Ted Cruz's name called. And he pauses. <laughs> So you clearly see... Okay, I'm just going to step forward because it's irrelevant. Hold on. Damn it, they're not going to show us the original footage. Okay, let's just listen to what she has to say here. Watch her analysis of this. Texas Senator Ted Cruz. So you clearly see Carson is frozen. Cruz says, okay, sure, I'll go ahead. Carson still continues to stand there. Nothing happens. Now, I just want to point this out. There's the floor director telling the neurosurgeon, go, you need to go on the set. Carson says, no, I'm okay, I'm good, I'll just stay here. The floor director says, fine. And then we see Donald Trump come around the corner. He too decides, you know what? I don't need to go on set. And there you have Rubio with a smile on his face, lapping the both of So they called Donald Trump out on stage. And instead of Donald Trump walking out on stage like everybody else and letting Ben Carson make a fool of himself and leaving it at that, Donald Trump stood with his friend. He stepped out. And he allowed his friends the courtesy of standing with him. And now they both kind of look like fools, I guess you could say. Although now that they're both doing it, they don't, neither of them really look like fools, honestly. Now it's just kind of like they both decided to do this. That is really honorable. That's, that is the kind of thing that I would do. Stand with somebody. When they've made a fool of themselves, make a fool of myself too. I'll do it too. I'll make, I'll make an ass of myself if that's what it takes to make this person feel better about their situation, you know? And that is the deeply respectable thing that I have about Donald Trump. The loyalty that he has for his friends, his real friends. Now, I don't think he has any friends nowadays. I think he's sans any friends whatsoever. He only uses people as far as he can at this point in his life. But when he does form an honest friendship with somebody, I feel like you can depend on the guy to help you and be nice to you and do a lot for you, you know? That, that's honorable. It's like even Hitler liked dogs. That's just kind of the way I see it. Anyway, sorry. Get, get a little sidetracked there. Let's keep listening. So these people are invited on stage. There's a hang-up. And uh, only one of them comes out. You can only imagine what's happening behind the scenes right now. I imagine that they called somebody. Someone missed their cue. 
And then they called the next person. So Rick Green was like, oh, that's me. I'm going out. You're just kind of out of luck. They're going to have to call you again or something. He's kind of like the Jeb Bush or the Ted Cruz of the situation, Rick Green is. And somebody in the back agreed. They got together and they said, you know what? We're going to work together and we're going to figure this out and we're all going to walk out at the same time. That's the way I see this playing out realistically. Like, who knows exactly how it played out, but it just reminded me of the Trump situation a lot. Kuhneman, Jesse Duplantis. Sorry, let me turn it back down because that's super loud. Hey, Kuhneman, Jesse Duplantis. It's, it's Jesse's shoes. That's what took it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> there they are. Those are much better than ours. Yeah. All right, y'all can sit down, sit down. All right. You surprised us, Pastor Gene. I, it's right here on my format. I, I told him y'all were praying, so don't mess up my story, okay? Just, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what got them all hung up or whatever, but I'd be willing to bet it was something similar to what happened with Trump and uh, Carson and Jeb and all that back before. Uh, I, I, Jesse, you're the new guy. I said, you're the new guy here. Yeah, I, I'm the new guy. I'm the shortest one. <laughs> but I'm also the richest. No. <laughs> Why would you say something like that, honestly? Why would you say that? I'm the shortest, but I am the richest. Really? Why would you say that? That is like, I'm embarrassed for him. To have said something like that. There is no circumstance in your life ever, no matter what, under which it's acceptable to say, I might be the shortest, but I'm also the richest. If that phrase pops in your head, remember this conversation you heard and don't say it, okay? God, I, I'm not even paying attention. Okay, I have to hit all of the shrines. That's what it is. I didn't remember exactly what the deal was or why I couldn't, whatever. Yeah, okay. So this is like the tutorial area. I have to hit all the shrines on the uh, on the island here, on the skyland, if you will. So I'm just going to look for where they are exactly. I don't remember. Um, and then I'm going to hit each and every one of them again. Like I am what 20, 30 hours deep, maybe already. I don't even know how deep into this I am already, but I didn't want to give any spoilers or show you guys anything. So I decided to just start from scratch and, you know, have a good time anyway. Okay, let's keep listening here. So what we've established so far, Jesse Duplantis is both the shortest and the richest. And in addition to all of that, likes wearing tennis shoes with his suits. Okay, go on. I did joke. It's a joke. <laughs> anyway, it's an honor to be here. I think 25, 30 years ago, I came to Cornerstone and preached the, uh, were you there? Yeah, the, past, the pastor was named Mari Davis. This guy's a scumbag, dude. Let me just, if you don't know this guy, Jesse Duplantis, I covered him recently, but let me just show you one quick, like a glimpse into the guy's life. Okay, hang on. I'm, all right, I'm, do you please, Brother Copeland, I was, uh, I, honestly, yes, sir. Okay, here. This is a good one. This one will do. Ooh. Check this clip out from uh, Jesse Duplantis. Listen to this. Minute and 31 seconds long. And it should give you a clear idea of who this guy is, what he believes, what he's all about, what he cares the most about, honestly. This is him doing like a telethon type of situation with Kenneth Copeland, okay? I honestly believe this that the reason why Jesus hadn't come is because people are not giving the way God told them to give. 
give me more money, send more money to my church, to my pockets, and Jesus is more likely to come, okay? You don't need to pay your mortgage because Jesus will be here. Just give me the money to make Jesus come. You see what I'm saying? I mean, when you understand, it, you can speed up the time. I was on television. He said, I heard you was a millionaire. I said, that's not right. That's not true. Talking about a guy he met, okay? He said, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. Multi. Now, add that to it, and you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, he couldn't handle that. He liked to have had a fit. And I said, you mess with me, I'll buy this station, and I'll fire you. Yeah. Wow, dude. Jesse Duplantis. Okay, so this video was from mid-September 2021, and he seems proud of this. It's like he's telling this story with pride, like he's enjoying it, like he's reminiscing. That is straight up disgusting, dude. By the way, what just happened on Breath of the Wild 2, if you weren't paying close attention, um, this guy here, that, that ghost looking thing, was the original king of Hyrule, of the area or whatever. And Link almost died. Well, this ghost of a king or whatever saved him. Remember, Link lost his right arm, and the ghost king gave Link his, his own right arm. And his own right arm has the ability to pick things up and to meld things together. It can combine items if it wants. So check it out. It just... Oh, and I can flip it in the air, see? So I can just touch the things together and hit A to attach, and boom, just like that, they're attached. See? And I can shake it to detach it. And I can uh, put it in any, like, position that I want, any order I want, or whatever. So, anyways, I need to cross this humongous heckin chasm so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna make a very very long thingamajigger mccoozy mcwhats it here like so because i'm an engineer and attach this at the end here like oh nope that's that's not quite right like so and then i'm gonna grab here and Whoop, too far. Okay, and then I'm just going to lay it right across like so. And boom, just like that. And boom goes the dynamite. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to take that with me. All right, let's keep listening. So Jesse Duplantis says he intends to fire this guy if he criticizes him anymore. Jesse Duplantis doesn't like criticism, apparently. And if this guy is going to criticize him, he's going to buy the station simply so that he can fire this one employee. Okay? Go on. Free speech Jesse, right? He didn't like that, did he? Did he? Uh, you know, that was a little fleshy, but it felt good. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Just did. You know what I mean? So Jesse Duplantis here is saying, now that was a little sinful, but I enjoyed it so much. It was such an enjoyable experience to tell this guy that I'm going to buy this station and fire him if he criticizes me again. Yes, it was sinful for me to feel that way, to be so overjoyed at the idea of firing this guy for criticizing me. Yeah, okay. I guess that was kind of sinful, but I enjoyed it. So, you know, suck it, basically. <laughs> so I realized that I will not move people emotionally yeah. to give. Right. No. I'm going to have people move according to the Word of God. What is God saying to you? And I really believe this. If people would call this number <clears throat> and put this victory all over the world on every available voice, every available outlet, God, the Father, he would say, Jesus, go get him. Yeah. 
Because you see, he wants to see us as much as we want to see him. So he says, if you give me your mortgage money, if you give me every penny that you own up to and including your savings account and everything in it, Jesus will come back. That's all you got to do, baby. Give me your savings account. Don't give Jesus your savings account. Give me your savings account. And just like that, Jesus will come back. That's disgusting, dude. That is straight up wrong. So anyway, that's Jesse Duplantis. That's who the guy is. Let's keep listening to and see what he has to say here on Flashpoint. Yeah, and I, I never, I had Brian. Remember, this is the guy that said, I may be the shortest, but I'm the richest. The same person. Real man of God right here, right? Real man of God. Oh, and you're amazing. Genesis did a fun number on televangelists in like 91. Go find Jesus. He knows me and get yourself some crock bites. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I will check that out. Uh, I assume that's the name of the thing, right? Go find Jesus. He knows me. Will do for sure. Will do about the crock bites. Absolutely. The dragons give you scales fangs etc one a day when you hit them with an arrow they explain with nadra and breath of the wild when you uh hit him with wait free him from ganon yeah that's true but it works differently in this game it's not the same i've been trying to find a way to um farm dragon scales in this and i just don't know how if somebody knows how to farm dragon scales in um t-o-t-k let me know I really did. And I was young. And anyway, sorry, let me step back. The, past, the pastor was named Mari Davis. Yeah, and I, I never, I had brown hair. I really did. And I was young. And anyway, it's such an honor to be here. And I appreciate Brother Gene asking me to be a part of these yep. great men and, and everything. He fancies himself, oh my God, I, I just fell. He fancies himself a comedian. He makes. All kinds of ridiculous, you know, comedian stand-up routines and stuff like that. It's just terrible. It's such a it sounds like he's in the middle of one right now. I really did. <laughs> and I was young. And anyway, it's such an honor to be here. And I appreciate Brother Gene asking me to be a part of these yep. great men and, and everything. It's such a blessing. So if I say something wrong, <laughs> it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blame it on the prophet. Praise there it God. is. So he's laughing like this is funny, but I'm sorry, man. I'm just not seeing it, but okay. <laughs> All right. So what we do is this, uh, if you've never been to Flashpoint, we come out here because I want you to see everybody. But we're going to do like a quick hit on some top stories. See what these gentlemen have to say. Rick by the by, here's another thing with Breath of the Wilds. Um, you can easily just take old pieces of wood like so. Oh my God, I, I totally screwed up the, there we go. Yeah, just take old pieces of wood and you can link them together in a chain like that. Make sure they don't fall. And you can kind of create a bridge that way too. You know, just kind of flip it over like so. And uh, link it. Anyway, let's step back, listen again. Like a quick hit on some top stories. See what these gentlemen have to say. Rick, tell me, what's the number one issue facing America right now? Lack of biblical knowledge, lack of biblical values. Every problem we're facing from the border to the corruption in the White House to corruption in media, all of it. Remember, this is the guy that believes that separation of church and state is not real and should not exist, and wants to do away with it effectively, and owns a nonprofit called, oh, God, what's it called? It's called um, Patriot Academy. That's it. It's called Patriot Academy. And the whole goal behind his nonprofit, Patriot Academy, is to propagandize and remove the existence of the First Amendment. That's the whole bit. That's the goal. That's what he wants to do. Disgusting. See what I just did there? Building a bridge with the, those old pieces of wood. I think I may have like... I, didn't, I don't know that I need to even be... 
at this spot yet. Like, there are other ways around that I probably should have taken, but whatever. It come, it's, it's growing in the Petri dish of biblical and civic ignorance, so everything else is... Your mom grew in a Petri dish. ...downstream from that. If we can restore biblical values, teach people truth, if we get everybody in America watching Flashpoint, we'll solve these problems. There we go. I agree with that. All right, so let me, those of you uh, that have never been to a Flashpoint event, here's the way it works. If you're easily offended, you can go ahead and leave now. Uh, I'm not easily offended. I just am ready to recognize when somebody is a scumbag. That's all. It's super simple for me to recognize when somebody is a complete scumbag. And um, if you're a scumbag, be prepared for me not to like you. That's all. Uh, you know, in the news world, they, they want to make sure you're fair and balanced. I'm fair, but I'm not balanced. <laughs> not the way you're thinking anyway. Mm, okay, I don't know what that means, but... That's why at the end of the show, we say Flashpoint's always where? To the right of center. All right. Yeah, I mean, they're right-wing extremists is what they are, and I can't even believe, like, they're pretending otherwise. They're just disgusting pe people, like, disgusting views that they espouse. Horrific, disgusting views that they espouse. So we're going to speak the truth. Well, most of the time it's in love. But no, when you talk about how much you hate the gay community and you hate the trans community and stuff like that, that's not in love. That's you being a scumbag. We're going to speak the truth tonight, Pastor Hank. What's on your mind? What's on your heart? What's God saying to you? Well, one thing that the Lord spoke to me this afternoon and as I was just praying is there's something very dangerous when God is provoked. How many understand that? And what they're doing... Yeah, this guy claims to be a prophet of God. So he's claiming that he received divine prophecy from God himself. That, and, and he's giving us that divine prophecy right now. He says, God spoke to him and told him, blah, 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 whatever thing it is. Nonsense. It's very blatant to provoke the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the God of this country. And I say that because the Lord is looking for people who are going to be provoked with the jealousy of God for him, for what he stands for in the way that he created marriage to be, the way that he said, this is male, this is female. And See, what did I tell you? It's all about the trans community and how evil they are, the gay community and how evil they are, and all that other garbage. Nothing that they say is in love. None of it is in love. It's all in hate. They're, everything that they say is about hate, just about. Like, how do they live with themselves? Some of the things that they say, do, and believe. Simply disgusting. So, I mean, this is his regular tirade on the gay community, the trans community, I guess. Just absurd, man. And watch this. God does not like when people steal. In fact, it was so important that Jesus said in John 10, let me show you a difference. There's one called the thief. He's the devil. He steal, kills, and destroys. But I've come to give you life, and I say this last thing. Since 2020, the stolen election, that's exactly what they did. They stole it. They know they stole it. Yeah, so Hank Kuhneman prophesied that they stole it. This guy did. And he was pretty on the nose, too. Like, he's very specific. And uh, you know what that means. If he fails miserably, if the prophecy doesn't come true, it means he's a false prophet. Simple as that. It just so happens his prophecy didn't come true. And you know what that means. I mean, this isn't something that I advocate for. I simply absolutely do not advocate for this. But the Bible specifically says those who tell a false prophecy are to be put to death. Doesn't get more straightforward than that. 
but no he should at the very least lose his ministry at the very least but he hasn't not only has he not lost his ministry he has grown as a ministry he has more parishioners now that he claims all this nonsense about a stolen election than he did before disgusting how does he live with himself notice the next thing they tried to do is release covid to kill us now what they want is they want oh my god so covid was like uh some deep state plot right to destroy a future generation of, for the children, but God is stepping in and giving this country life again. Amen. And I'm telling you, America shall be made great again, and it's happening before our eyes. Amen. Just painful, dude. Simply painful. Yeah, amen. Brother Jesse, same question. What's on your heart? What's on my heart is I, we have to understand something. I heard President Biden say this, and I, I shivered in the Holy Ghost. And I, I don't mean it because I hate no one. I just hate the devil. And he said that transgender is the soul of this nation. That's a Dude, they are obsessed with trans people. They have trans people on the mind more than trans people have trans people on the mind. Dead serious. What is going through their heads that they can't think about anything but the trans community? Really? why do you care so much it's nuts this is like straight up unhealthy okay it is not healthy to think about the trans community to this degree move on with your life you know if i didn't know better i would say that there was some kind of uh i don't know like a i don't know like a weird obsession going on here you know like these people are just entirely too interested in what trans people are up to right now and what they're doing and what they're involved in and stuff and it just kind of makes you wonder doesn't it a little bit at least a lie from the pits of hell amen i've had people coming to me and they say oh, but i don't know what i'm a man sorry let me say that again or start over from the pits of hell amen yeah, one more soul of this nation that's a lie from the pits of hell amen i've had people coming to me and they say oh, but i don't know whether i'm a man or a woman i said well look down it'll tell you what you are <laughs> just look down that's all you gotta do look down for god <laughs> i mean i don't think anybody has walked up to him and said i don't know if i'm a man or a woman in fact i <laughs> i would bet nine thousand dollars money i don't really have but okay you know what i'll come up with it i will f i'll crowdfund for this money i will put nine thousand dollars down if this guy has ever had one of his parishioners come up to him and say i don't know if i'm a man or a woman i will bet anything this guy has never been asked that question or, or had that said to him by one of his like you know, one of his sheep or whatever, one of his sheeple, if you will. Just nonsense, all of it. And it's simply disgusting what he's saying and doing here. Using this as a method of hurting people around him. Using it as a method of lambasting people, making them feel bad, um, making them feel embarrassed about who they are and trying to attack an entire community and for what nothing just because he wants to just because it's fun that's it not much more to it than that that is straight up disgusting right there straight up wrong welcome to jesse duplantis that's who the guy is <laughs> you feel you are what you are you may not feel married but look around you are you see so i made up my mind that greater is he was in us than he was in them and we're going to change this nation from a flashpoint army to a, uh, to a flashpoint nation and i'm telling you, we can do it in a day we can do it in one meeting ladies and gentlemen it can happen 
if we'll believe it. See, but we got to believe it. Glory to God. And when you believe something, then you got to get past belief. And you got to know, I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. So they can say what they want. Bless God. Our God is stronger than anything they can say or do. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on. So let me just... I don't really know what he's talking about here, but okay, whatever. By the by, did you notice how I built a boat out of nothing? I found just some, pli some supplies sitting around, a sail. I threw some tree trunks together here, and now I have a boat. I don't remember doing this on my first run through, but I'm actually pretty happy with that. You can make all kinds of cool stuff later. Like, you can get a dispenser. There are these, like, little dispensers. Ooh, these things are way more useful than you realize, too. You get these little dispensers eventually where you put in, like, monster parts that you've killed. And when you, like, put the monster parts in, it spits out little tiny balls with stuff in it. And it's stuff like fans and batteries and... um like these Zonai charges and stuff that I just picked up. You put these into them. Uh, fans, batteries, um, like bird wings, and all like control sticks. All kinds of cool stuff, dude. Oh, my God. This game is really, really awesome. I love it. Love this game. Uh, Owen. Uh, wait, I've read that one. Zero Felix. Nope, it's the same in... T O T K. Oh, is it? Because I I managed to well, the dragons are in a different spot for sure. I managed to hit um Nadra and I got a scale from him uh from it. But I couldn't get Nadra to spawn consistently in one location. So I looked around at Farash and the spawn locations are different. So I went to um, the spawn location of Nadra, uh, or I'm sorry, not Nadra, of uh, Farash, where Farash typically spawns. And yeah, I couldn't, I mean, I got a horn from Farash, but I couldn't consistently get him to spawn anywhere, is all. It, it was a real pain, unfortunately. So yeah, I don't know. I, w I would love it if I could, like, find some way to get, like, the dragons to spawn consistently so that I can farm for them. But, yeah. See, now I'm crafting weapons. So, uh, I have the ability to, like, pick things up and, like, combine them together, like so, you know? That's the idea, and they're melded, and then you just shake your controller, and they become unmelded. And uh, and it's the same with weapons, although it's a different move. So I equip the weapon I want. I select fuse for the weapon, and then I pick which thing I want to fuse it to, my shield or my, or my weapon. And I have a thick stick here, so... I can pick this boulder or this boulder. I can pick other weapons or shields... Like, I can just drop this stick. See, I can fuse to this stick now. Um, check it out. I can fuse this shield to this thick stick, but I don't want to do that. I need that shield. You can fuse bows. I mean, they don't do anything. They, do, they don't add much to it, but, you know it's possible to do you can fuse anything to anything is the point so i've got this thick stick i'm going to fuse this boulder to this thick stick and so now i can like wave this heavy boulder around and damage stuff like this see that pillar because it it wouldn't normally be damageable otherwise boom uh oh and also you can combine items with arrows. You just have normal arrows now in this one. You don't attack things. Or, I'm sorry, you don't have, like, fire arrows. Fucking cat. 
you don't have fire arrows you don't have electric arrows you don't have ice arrows you have arrows and you hit the up button and you choose the item that you want to attach to the arrow fire fruit is the only elemental thing that i have here if i shoot the choo choo jelly it hits it with a water base attack so anyway you'll see it in a second here just tell that camera i'm jesse duplantis and i approve this message just thought i'd tell you i don't know why he's proud of being jesse duplantis i certainly wouldn't be i love it and that is why jesse duplantis is with us on flashpoint Okay, Lance Wall now. How do I always end up after him or him? Yeah, I That's don't know. All right, so it's the prophetic quality of Flashpoint has always been what made it unique from the beginning. Again, this guy right here, Lance Walnaw, is a Russian plant, in my opinion, a Russian agent, and had his bank account commandeered by the Russian government not too long I'm sorry not by the Russian government by the US government not too long ago here you go so I pull out my arrow like I'm gonna fire I hit the up button the up arrow and pick which thing I want to shoot from it see I can shoot the choo-choo jelly I can shoot this thing which doesn't do that much damage so but it shows how much damage it does plus one damage plus three damage plus two, plus one. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to do the fire thing and I'm going to shoot the wall there, see? Anyway, this guy, Lance Walna, was arrested, or I'm sorry, had his bank account not too long ago frozen for money laundering and for a whole bunch of other questionable stuff. He is a Russian agent for all intents and purposes. I believe that this guy's working with Russia to you know, accomplish the goals that Russia has in mind. We, we rode this election cycle. We went through this process, but we're meeting now at a very pivotal moment. We're meeting now when the corruption that has been in the Biden administration, the Biden family is exposed. But not only that, the FBI... What Biden corruption is he talking about there is no biden corruption i mean this is completely made up entirely he is desperate to make it out as though biden is some like evil doer or whatever it's all nonsense all of it every last bit of it is garbage but he is absolutely obsessed with making it out as though Biden is some evildoer or whatever. It's honestly sad and disgusting, truthfully. The FBI and the CIA and the Treasury Department have covered it up on purpose. The FBI, the CIA have covered it up on purpose. Okay, great. Show us some uh, evidence of that. I'll take anything. We're, we're at a historic moment when a veil is being torn. And here's the fascinating thing. I'm looking at the media that's coming out, as Gene does. This is our profession. And Gene Bailey is the host. That's who he's referring to there. And nobody is talking about it except for those that are actually speaking the truth. You'll hear it on War Room. You'll hear it on Flashpoint. You'll hear it on, on Frank's speech. In other words, now the divide is becoming conspicuous, right. where you're seeing that it's not just people that are in disagreement. The people actually are under a spirit of manipulation from high places. This is the moment for a movement. And listen to me, nothing short of a movement can change this. This revival has to become a reformation movement. It has to hit, there's how many counties? 3,100? 3,143. 3,143 counties in the United States, 17 are going to determine the future of the country, roughly four to seven states. The body of Christ is about to show up where the battle is hottest. The body of Christ is about to show up where what? I guess the bottom line, what he's trying to communicate here is 
if he tries hard enough, he believes that he's going to be able to flip elections to make them go his way. Well, here's the thing about it. A lot of people are worried about this. I don't want you to be worried about it. I don't want you to be worried about what happens next, about whether or not, you know, these people are going to succeed in what they're doing right now and being absolutely psychotic the way that they are right now. In my opinion, I believe that these people have dramatically overplayed their hand and ruined any chance that they had at winning future elections. These people, look, you know why people on the right were more moderate in the past? Do you know why that is? Because they know if they went more right, they'd lose elections. Now the mask is off. The Republican Party is ready to go as right as it takes. Go as far right as they can possibly get. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but they're going to lose elections moving forward. That's all. In my opinion, that's what's going to happen. We don't have to worry about it because, in my opinion, I believe that they're going to lose. And I think that they know that, and they're trying to find some way to reverse that that trend. I'm a cat. I have nine lives. Okay. Welcome, bald Thanos. Thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Yeah. Amen. Mike. Mike Lindell, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Let's listen to Mike Lindell's section here. Well, I've been stuck in one lane, and that's melt down the voting machines and turn them into prison bars. <laughs> okay. Um, I've said this before, but, you know, voting machines are made of silicon, and silicon is made of uh, sand, gra uh, glass, same material. So you want to make prison bars out of glass okay <laughs> you know the um we've uh for the last what over two years now since january 7th of 2021 which is the day by the way you should all look back on and say that's the day we started to win the day after that and what happened on january 7th was they tried to turn out our voices forever 1.2 million Americans were deplatformed. Churches were deplatformed. Okay, I think what he's talking about here is Jan um, January 7th. Like, after January 6th, everybody recognized how deeply messed up the people were on January 6th and the deeply messed up things they were willing to do. And they... You know, they, I mean, they, they played their hand and lost. That was the end of the line for them. You know, that was it. Every, they, everybody recognized who they were and what they were and what they were willing to do after that point. Now, did they remove them from social media? I mean, the January 6th people after January 6th on January 7th. I think that's the least of their worries, honestly. I think they should be more worried about staying out of jail. And unfortunately for them, luckily for democracy, a lot of January 6th people went to jail uh, after what they did. So, But, of course, Mike Lindell views it as like this big effort to like de-platform people or whatever. Just absurd. On YouTube, crook, evil Vimeo, all that stuff. And uh, our president, our real president lost his... A real president. <laughs> God, just Donald Trump's who he's referring to. It's just painful. All that stuff. And uh, our president, our real president lost his Twitter account that day. Our real president, you hear that? <laughs> yeah. But... But, but they didn't get our voice that day. We, they didn't silence us. There was, I always compare that, Gene, the little, on a TV screen when I was a kid, the black and white TVs where it would go down to this little tiny blue dot and you'd see their kid and you'd turn it back on before the dot went out. 
Well, that dot was our voice, and it didn't go out, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger okay. and bigger. Okay, he's talking about CRT TVs. Um, that's an old school reference. Uh, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but okay. So basically what he's saying is if you silence us, we're going to become more and more powerful. Well, that's simply not true as a matter of fact. If you are silenced, you are less powerful. If you think deplatforming doesn't work, just ask Alex Jones. Of course deplatforming works. Otherwise, Alex Jones would be asking to be deplatformed. He's not. Nobody wants to be deplatformed. And bigger. And God's had his hand in all this, and I can tell you the... I, I get, you know, I want everything to happen yesterday and the day before, but then I sit back, I got this just sense of relief going, wow, this is why this all had to unfold the way it did, because evil just keeps exposing itself. Remember, evil is greedy. That's our biggest advantage. They overplay their hand every time. Your mom's greedy. I'm going, you know, they, they, you get this, it's just like, like, take it back to those two senators a long time ago now in Georgia when they took them both. If on January 4th of 2021, if they would have been smart, they would have just took one of them and said, give them back a Republican so they shut up about these electronic voting machines and this election. But they didn't. They were greedy and took them both. So everybody God, he's trying to, like, apply logic to this whole situation when the logic is flawed from the start. Like, he has no idea what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, another thing about this game, there are caves everywhere. Uh, you thought that there were caves, like, in uh, Breath of the Wild? Oh, no, baby. There are caves all over the heckin' place in this game. Also, you can do some really cool things with Keese eyeballs and Keese wings. Um, if you fire them with an arrow, like you pull out your bow and arrow like you're going to fire it, and then you hit the up button to pick the item that you want to use. Pick the keys eyeball. It's a homing device. It automatically runs right into whatever it's in front of. Let's see. Here, watch. See it? It's a homing device. That's really, really cool, right? Also, um, there's one of those things in every single cave. So, yeah. Anyway, electronic voting machines and this election, but they didn't. They were greedy and took them both. So everybody went, oh, now what do we do? And it woke up this country and we are in the greatest revival in history. Right, right. So they stole everything. They stole the election from everybody and that woke people up and that saved the country. Just complete nonsense, dude. Come on. Do you even believe the things you're saying? Honestly, does Mike Lindell believe the things that come out of his own mouth? I have this conspiracy theory that... All right, in the United States, to be proven liable for defamation, it has to be proven that you believed... or that you did not believe the thing that you said. It has to be proven that you said it with malice, knowing it was false, and you said it anyways. I have this pet conspiracy theory that I've kind of been bandying about. That Mike Lindell is intentionally acting like a nutcase in an attempt to convince everybody around him that he really does believe this nonsense to get himself out of a billion dollar lawsuit. I don't know. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. This guy is just absurd on every level and I am here for every second of it, honestly. That's right. Do you believe that or not? All right, it looks like that was uh, Mike Lindell's, the end of Mike Lindell's segment. God, this guy's crazy. Yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comments, man. I am deeply entertained by this. If you want to see more of this, follow me over to my uh, my unfiltered channel, Telltale Unfiltered, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I do a stream every, mor or every morning there, 
Wednesday, Thursday morning, 10.30 a.m., I do a stream there. So follow me over. And I'm going to finish this. We only got like 15 minutes in. God, I can't believe we only got 15 minutes in. Usually I'd be in like 20 at least, maybe 30 by now. But anyway, fascinating stuff, man. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I hope to see you over there on my main channel or on my uh, unfiltered channel on Wednesday morning to see the rest. If you missed it, check my website, owenmorgan.com. I... It's kind of an aggregator. I upload all of the videos after the fact, sometimes ad-free there. So check that out. Okay, well, I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. It's been fun. Check out Breath of the Wild 2, Tears of the Kingdom. Fantastic game. Fantastic game. And I will talk to you guys hopefully tomorrow morning, okay? All right, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for coming. That's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. And take a look at my YouTube channels. Owen Morgan, where I talk about religious issues. Telltale Fireside Chat, where I talk about politics. Telltale Unfiltered, where I do long-form breakdowns of stuff like this. And Telltale Reads, where I read books by televangelists and others. I release everything in parts, but every part stands independently of the last. So you can jump in anywhere, and I'll make sure it makes sense. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of all my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email list to get early access to everything. All links are in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.